Hello everybody, I'm here with uh, a video uh, related to the definition of uh, Poisson's ratio and also the relation between sigma and epsilon, normal strain and normal strain, which we know it as Hooke's law uh, within that linear uh, elastic zone. So in this problem, we have a, a shaft made of a plastic, 200 millimeter long, as you could see, and 50 millimeter in diameter. So the length is given to be 200 millimeters, right? And the initial diameter is 15 millimeters. So it says if an axial load of 300 Newton is applied to it, we want to determine the change in its length. So that would be really easy. So we want to find delta L. We can even call it delta. So that's one thing we want to find, and also change in diameter, delta D. So we are given the modulus of elasticity of this material, the acrylic uh, plastic, and also the Poisson's ratio, which is 0.4. All right, so really straightforward problem. Uh, let's take a look at it. What we want to do actually to find uh, the, uh, the change in length, basically what we need is to use this equation known as Hooke's law, sigma equal E epsilon. Now, if I could find sigma, which is simply load divided by area, and that's very easy, and let me do that. So take the 300 newtons and divide it by the area, which would be pi r squared or pi over 4 diameter squared. Remember, we got to change the um, millimeters. So let me just erase this so I can put the units in there too. So 0.015, right, meters squared. So we'll get uh, the resulting answer in Pascal. In this case, would be about 1.678 times 10 to the 6 Pascal or 1.678 megapascal. So that's the normal stress in this rod. Now, having uh, the Hooke's law, relating uh, sigma to epsilon. Since we already know what the property modulus of elasticity, epsilon is gonna be sigma over E. So let's go ahead and find epsilon. Remember epsilon is dimensionless. 1.678 megapascal divided by 2.7 gigapascal. Giga means 10 to the nine. Remember pascal over pascal, dimensionless. So this becomes epsilon along the axial direction or longitudinal axis. So let me call that epsilon uh, axial. So 0 0.000, this is going to be a small number as expected. And remember, it's dimensionless. Sometimes we call it millimeters over millimeters. And once you have the epsilon axial, what's the definition of axial? normal strain. It's change in length divided by length. So delta L or delta would be L times epsilon axial. So if we go ahead and calculate this, the length is 200 millimeters, right? And this is the epsilon that we got using Hooke's law. So the result would be a very small change in the length, one, uh, 0.126 millimeter. So we took care of this part. Now, the next thing is, how do we cha find change in diameter? This is where the Poisson's ratio comes in, guys. Poisson's ratio is defined as negative of the ratio of lateral normal strain to axial normal strain. We already have the axial normal strain, right? So we can go ahead and find lateral. Now, what do we mean by lateral? See, the direction of the load is the axial direction. So this is the axial direction perpendicular to that, be it uh, in the z direction, if you want to call that, or in the, uh, the y direction, if you want to call that y, or z direction. Uh, those, those, those are called lateral directions. In this case, this is wrong. So it doesn't matter. Lateral refers to change in uh, you know, diameter, basically, or the direction of diameter. So in this case, see, we can go ahead and find the lateral strain by just doing a cross multiplication, right? 
So lateral strain would be negative of nu. Nu is 0.4 and axial is 0.0006288. So now I'm going to move to the next phase, guys, and get the lateral strain for you, which was that 0.4, negative of 0.4 times that number, 0.0006288. We end up getting a negative 0.0025. One five. So if you have expansion in the axial direction, right, we'll have contraction in the lateral direction. Right? So that's why we have a negative here. All right, next is in the lateral direction, epsilon lateral is change in diameter divided by diameter. So in this case, uh, we can go ahead and find change in the diameter then. So we'll just take the diameter and multiply it by epsilon lateral. So change in diameter would be, remember the diameter was 15 millimeters, and the lateral strain is negative 0.002515. So we're gonna end up getting contraction in, along the diameter, how much? But this much. So the final length of the diameter would be the initial length uh, plus delta D, but delta D is negative. It would be 15 minus 0 0.00377, whatever that comes out to be. That's, that's the final length of the diameter in uh, millimeters. By the way, um, it just uh, came to my mind that I should also mention that there is a relation between three important properties namely modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, and modulus of rigidity. Remember, the same way that we have Hooke's law relating sigma to epsilon by this equation, we can also relate shear stress to shear strain using this property known as shear modulus or modulus of rigidity. And the equation that relates these, uh, so these, are, these three properties are not independent from each other. So, and the equation that relates them is this, G equal, so one way to relate them is to use this. So for example, in our case, if the E is 2.7 gigapascal, right, and Poisson's ratio is 0.4, so we could get the 2.7 gigapascal and divide it by, looks like 2.8. So this comes out to be, uh, something in the neighborhood of 0.9, uh, I believe 0.98. I don't have the calculator in front of me, uh, but I think it would be some, somewhere in the range of 0.9 or whatever, gigapascal. So you see, modulus of rigidity is always smaller than modulus of elasticity. Okay, guys, I hope you like this video. As usual, if you like the video, please subscribe, and we'll get you more videos. Thanks again.